Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available, to you, available for you to watch later at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for any of you who are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for uh, libraries in Nebraska. So similar to your whatever state library. Uh, we provide services and training and resources and grants um, and databases, all sorts of things to all sorts of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, uh, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Uh, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, things we think they could be doing, um, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on and do presentations about services or programs or things that we offer here through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers and that is what we have today. Um, join us, uh, joining us from uh, next door, I would say to me, I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska, and she is, um, Mary is in Crete um, from our uh, Crete Public Library in Crete, Nebraska, just to the um, west of us. And uh, this is a presentation, uh, there's uh, in May of each year, one of our regional library systems does what they call their training extravaganza and um, a day of training and workshops and presentations um, for librarians and staff in Nebraska. And this is a session that you did at the most recent one this year, um, just yes. last month. And, um, I thought it was really a cool session and I invited her to come on to share with broader audience too. So um, Mary, I'm just going to hand over to you to uh, take it away and introduce yourself more fully um, and tell us about what is the thing about teens. All right. Um, yes, my name is Mary Vasquez. I am currently the services librarian at Creek Public Library. Um, a little bit about me and my background with working with teens. Um, Previous to being the youth services librarian, I used to once upon a time be the adult and technical services librarian at Crete Public Library. Oh, wow. And I, at that time, decided I really want to work with youth. And so I left my job as a librarian and I went to work um, at our public school district. And I worked at um, a middle school, our middle school for about five years. And during that time, I ran um, our middle school after school program. And so it was open to the whole school. And it was kind of like what I do now. I had to offer programming for teens. I had to learn to deal with teen attitude, teen behavior, um, like connecting with them, how to keep them engaged, so all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and so when the youth services librarian job came up. I decided, you know what, I really miss being a librarian, but I want to keep doing what I'm doing. So this is a really good mesh of all those things for me. So I'm really excited to be able to do this presentation today. Um, I'm just going to start out with a question and let's see if I can get this to work. There we go. Um, for those of you, you can drop it in the chat. Um, when you are at a library um, and you see a large group of teens come in, and when I say large, I mean like more than six and they're all together and they come into the library, what are your initial thoughts? Um, do you get excited? Do you get nervous? Are you surprised to see teens coming in? Like, what are those initial like emotions? <laughs> I can. All right, yeah, so please go ahead and type in the question section. Um, I know personally for me, it depends on the day and like we've had moments where like 
15 to 20 teens coming all together and it's that like initial moment of panic on where are they all going to go and what are they going to do so mm -hmm. a little bit of that nervousness depending Absolutely. on the day sometimes i get really excited so yeah so anybody else what are your thoughts when you see this um, when you see a group um, of them to me so someone says i've never seen this i guess they don't come in in a large group <laughs> So maybe it's less uh, traumatizing. <laughs> so I'm not seeing any of their comments come in. I guess they don't have any thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> the follow up question to that is. If you happen to see teens in your library, again, it could be one teen or a group of teens, um, and you think you might have a program that they might be interested in attending, how do you think you would approach them? Again, if you're feeling nervous about seeing teens coming in in the first place or surprised, you might be unsure of how do I interact with them. Um, yeah. I know, depending on the group, like I always pay attention to social cues. Is mm -hmm. it um, is it a teen or a group of teens that they seem like they came in, they're on a mission, you know, they're here to do homework or they're here to hang out and they go like beeline to an area in the library. They probably know what they're doing. Um, and I might approach them, but I might also say, you know what, they might not be interested in attending today. Um, but if I have a group of teens that comes in and they're horsing around or they look bored, or on the other hand, maybe it's a teen that I see um, engaging in activity related to the program that we're offering that day, then I might just walk up to them and say, hey, no pressure, just wanted to let you know that today we are having, um, we're having a movie night. And this is the movie that we're showing. You're welcome to join us. Um, if not, that's okay. Just letting you know, we're gonna be in the community room. We're gonna have snacks. Feel free to join us if you want. And then I personally, I walk away. I, I told them what I needed to tell them. I told them what it was. I told them about how long it was gonna last, where it was, and then it's up to them if they wanna join us or not. Because I don't wanna, I don't wanna like hover over them and then be like, oh, I have to say yes because this person isn't going away. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes they come and sometimes, you know, they say, I can't because I have to go, but they'll come ask like, are you doing this again? Or um, they might ask follow-up questions. So that's always a good sign to like, okay, they were interested and they were listening to what I was saying. Um, yeah, we do have someone who say, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm you know, it's similar, like, I'd be, I'm not looking for ideas of what how, better ways to reach out to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Common thing, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go along, and I'll try to remember some stories of how things have happened. But um, this two programming ideas. So these are not in any order of how I've done or. Yes, in the order that I've done these programs, I've listed them in order of budget. So some libraries might have a bigger budget and some libraries might have a smaller budget. So there should be some ideas in here that anybody can do, depending on what your budget is. So the first one, we recently did this in April. Um, we hosted an improv night. And so I do have a teen advisory board but I will throw out there, I haven't always had a teen advisory board. It's still very new, but this was something that they wanted to do. And so we had an improv night and it just allowed teens to show, like it says here, their quick thinking skills, practice communication. Um, and this night was one of those nights where my teens had to convince me to host this program for them. Um, because it's an acting night, like it's getting up in front of your peers and acting things out, like it makes them very vulnerable. And if you're not comfortable with that, you might be less inclined to participate. Mm -hmm. um, 
but they convinced me that this is a popular activity amongst teenagers and they did a little demonstration for me and I said okay we're going to try it if it's not successful if if you know you guys show up and don't participate I'm just letting you know we might not be doing this again in the future and they said okay no we are going to recruit kids we are going to show up and we are going to participate okay and so I did have some teens show up and it was kind of a fun mix of kids because half of them were like super quiet introverts <laughs> and the other half were like the extroverts. So I was like, the extroverts are going to dominate this and it ended up being a good balance. So on here, there's some game ideas that we did that night. Um, we did something called character bus and this might have been my favorite one that they did of the night. So basically you put some chairs in um, rows of two and at the front of the rows you have the bus driver. And so um, I had one of the kids volunteer to be the bus driver. And so the bus driver is driving the bus and passengers will get on one at a time. And um, as passengers are getting on the bus, they have to have a larger than life personality. So, um, we had some passengers that were getting on and were just like grumpy and just you know mumbling about everything we had one character that was just crying and so what happens is whoever is on the bus has to take on the personality of the new passenger so if i'm the bus driver and the person that's getting on is like singing show tunes i have to start singing singing show tunes too and so does everyone else that was currently on the bus. So it was kind of fun. They mixed it up. They did a bunch of different things. Um, that was a fun game. Numbers game, um, this is kind of fun. It's one of those, know your audience and like if you can joke around with them or not. Um, but you put numbers one through 10 on slips of paper, crumple them up and like put them in something. And you go around your group and they will draw a slip of paper. And so, for example, if I were to draw a slip of paper and it had the number three on it, then during the round, I am only allowed to communicate using three words um, at a time on one round. So um, if somebody has 10 words, obviously they can say a lot more things. If somebody has the number one, every time they respond, they can only say one thing at a time. So it was kind of fun. And then what happened is, and these are kids that don't know each other, but it was this is the fun part of it is they started mixing up their numbers during the rounds because some kids then decided they had more things to say. And so they were swapping numbers and I was like, OK, whatever. <laughs> They're having fun. Um, questions only. This one was kind of harder, but it's also one of those like almost critical thinking games because you act like moderator will say like, OK, this is a scene. You're in a grocery store and you're looking for a specific item on the shelf. You can't find it. And they go, okay, see. And they start acting. Every time that they can communicate or every time that they choose to communicate, they are only allowed to communicate asking questions. So, hey, can you help me find this particular item? What's the item that you're looking for? Well, I think I'm looking for this or, you know, or something, but it always has to be a question. So as the scene kept continuing, progressing, it just got more and more hilarious because you have to get very creative and like, I want this answer, but I can only get this answer by asking another question. So anyways, this, like I said, the budget is zero. You don't need anything. Um, I just printed off the games and I just, I was a moderator, I ran the games with them, but I would do this again in the future, so. Next one, we've done this one a couple times. Um, I've done it a couple different ways. And so we've had trivia nights. Um, and I have done trivia nights where it's just like general trivia. And um, I think one time I did like pop culture. And so it was like celebrities and like influencers, music, movies. Um, and we did it on this website called Jeopardy Labs which I really enjoy. It's basically like Jeopardy on TV um, where they pick the category and the points. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so whoever ends up with the most points at the end, um, like, that's who wins. But if you have a large group of kids, you can, I let them do it as like a small team. And so whoever's on the team, if they win, then they all get prizes. Um, I've also, the last time I did it, I had the team suggest that we use um, Kahoot, which they are familiar with. I guess that's something they use at their school. And so for that one though, um, kids have to have some type of electronic device. So they have to have a laptop on them, a cell phone, tablet, um, whereas Jeopardy Labs, they don't need anything. So when we did Kahoot, I did have a couple kids that didn't have electronic devices. And so I had to have some available that they could borrow. So just keep that in mind if you choose to do that. Um, Google Slides is something um, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. You would just make your questions and your slides and go through it. Um, But both Jeopardy Labs and Kahoot have pre-made games. So that's also really good to know. And then as far as prizes, um, you can do whatever you want as prizes. I always just do um, food. So I do like the, you know, like king size candy bars or like chips or the packages of cookies or something. And I just put them on a table and then I just let them pick. And they really like that. So you could do that for about $20. What you're spending money on is your prizes. And then of course, if you want to get better prizes, you can do that. But that one's been pretty popular. Um, we've done a movie night a couple times. Um, I The first time we did it, we watched um, Dungeons and Dragons, the newest movie that came out. Oh, yeah. Um, and that was kind of fun because we, a coworker of mine, and I had been talking about starting a D&D group in the fall. Oh, nice. Well, we've never done it before. And... We didn't know if there was going to be any interest. So we thought, well, if teens show up to the movie, they must have some interest in Dungeons and Dragons. So that was really good. Um, and then after the movie, we were able to talk to them and we had a uh, sign up sheet if they were interested. It was really good. The last time they wanted to watch a classic movie. Um, and then they kept telling me that they want like a movie marathon. So we're going to try that next. But anyways, again, you could do this relatively cheap. Pick a movie that's already in your collection um, and then just spend money on snacks. And so I always get things that they can make like their own trail mix and they seem to enjoy that the most. So I think snacks are probably a running theme for all of these. It's always a good way to attract uh, teens. Yes. Hey, really anybody, Jill. <laughs> I always tell them like there's going to be food because they're yeah. always hungry. So they're like, okay, we'll come. So and then they have fun. But um. This is something I've done in the past, and we are going to revive it this next um, year in the fall. So we did um, a manga anime club, and um, I actually stole this idea from when I was at the um, after school program running that I had a staff member that she actually ran this club for me at that time. And I loved her take on this. So what she would do is she would pick different animes, some were really old, some were newer, and each week they would watch one episode, and then she would tie something in from Japanese culture and um, into the episode. So they'd watch an episode, and then she'd say, okay, well, in this episode, um, like Naruto, who absolutely loves ramen and is always eating ramen, we're going to do... Um, a cooking challenge and like who can make the best ramen and you know it was kind of fun um so then i took that and i've done that here so something that's been really popular um i've done snack taste testing where i bought a bunch of like japanese snacks um we have a local asian store and i bought them there and we do like blind taste testing so i don't tell them what it is and then they you know do their rating and then we talk about what it is and if they liked it and where to find it all that kind of stuff um we did um chopstick lessons so we learned about um the origin of chopsticks and the different kinds of chopsticks and we watched a little tutorial on like the proper way to hold chopsticks and then i let them practice for a few minutes and then we did a competition of picking up different items 
So we did like marshmallow, like giant marshmallows to start because that's easy to pick up. And then we got down to like little things. I think I had like dried beans and like, you know, who, again, I timed it, like who could pick up the most things in a minute. So it was pretty fun. Um, we've done a Japanese tea ceremony before. Um, the kids watched videos on like the tradition behind it and um, the importance of like every step that they take and why they take it. And then um, at the very end, they like practice setting up a tea ceremony and following the steps. And they really enjoyed that. Um, this last one I liked, I, there were some learning moments with this though. So we made character felt plushies. Um, and so I found pattern, like sewing patterns online and I cut out the felt for them. Um, and they got to pick out the character from the anime that they wanted and then they like sewed it. Um, and then they stuffed it and they could make it into a keychain. They were about five inches tall, so it could be a keychain or just whatever they wanted to do with it. Learning moment with this though, um, I tried to do this program in about an hour time slot when really this should have been something that I either did in at least a two hour time slot or over multiple sessions. So that was a learning moment for me if I ever do it again. Um, Budget, you could do this for as low as $20, and then, you know, you can go up to making this as expensive as you want. Um, something I will say, a way I tweak this then, because um, like I said, at the school they watched an anime episode and then did an activity. Um, what I did here at the library is I really wanted to highlight our manga section. And so I would pick books from the collection and we would talk about a manga. And then if it was um, a show that they had seen, we would talk about, you know, how they changed it or if they'd stay pretty close to the book. And so that was kind of fun. But then they found out that we have all these mangas and it helped circulation go up. So that was a really good tie in here. Um, the next one, we did a self care night um, during summer reading last year. And so we made different kinds of self care items. Um, and this one is going to be more female oriented, but I did have some boys show up and they were able to make all of these and nobody complained about anything. So that was really good. Um, but I had just had coasters and like ceramic coasters and I had paint and paint brushes. They asked for Sharpies and they could, you know, decorate it. And we talked about like, you know, if you're feeling really stressed, like some ways to relax is like um, make a cup of hot tea and like sit in a cozy spot. And, um, I, help, I let them make journals. Um, and so they made, uh, they folded their paper and we hole punched it. And then I had them thread their yarn through it and they could decorate the cover and they had their little DIY journal. Um, we also made sugar scrubs. And so this one was kind of funny. I didn't realize how many teenagers haven't used sugar scrubs before. So they kept thinking because of the ingredients that it was something they could eat. And so I said, do not eat this. <laughs> like, so, um, but it's pretty basic. It's just sugar and then coconut oil um, and then essential oils for scent. Just make sure whatever essential oils that you purchase, that they're safe to be put on skin. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't want to go buy essential oils, we actually did instant coffee to scent ours. Oh. And sure. um, they really liked that. So. I actually ran out of stuff and I said, I promise next time I will more. So <laughs> that one, you could do just a couple activities if you wanted to make it cheaper or, you know, you can always add in more and make it more expensive. But the most expensive one was obviously the sugar scrubs because coconut oil is expensive. So but mm -hmm. it was fun. Um, we had an open craft night. So this, it says on there, clean out the closet because that's, Basically what I did is what sometimes I'm sure most of you will encounter is you have, you know, you purchase these craft kits or these projects throughout the year and they don't all get used and you end up with like an odd amount, like three birdhouses or like two of this craft kit or something. And it might not be something that you want to like purchase more of and like do again as an activity. Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. I just had this Mod Podge of like all these different crafts. And so I just took them all out and I put them on a big table and I said, okay, you guys have an hour and a half, go to town. You can do as many of these activities as you want. And so um, they got to do what they wanted. So I had tote bags and I had fabric paint. Um, so they got to decorate those if they wanted. Um, I had little mini canvases. They could paint something. Um, I found in a box, we had like ceramic piggy banks that they could paint. So I took those out. Um, one kid, this was interesting. So it's called found object art. And so this is good for um, if you have like game pieces that like you find laying around and you just like put them in a bin and have them or any other random little things. He actually started doing this is he just started building like this little sculpture out of found objects. And I said, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm just making art. Okay. So that was kind of fun. Um, and then I had birdhouse kits that we'd done as a program and I didn't have enough to do another program. So I just took those out and um, the, like actually nail the nails into the wood and it was kind of fun they could paint them so it was really good to just clean out the closet yeah it's kind of like leftovers like <laughs> um <laughs> of all the leftover bits that you have yeah. yeah um we've done board game night a couple times mm. um this one's kind of fun to do at the beginning of the school year so like kids are have been home all summer and now they have to get back into the routine of going to school so it's a fun program, like stress-free. They can just come and relax. Um, but yeah, we just take out games and they get to play whatever they want. Um, I always tell them, though, that if they're going to play Uno, that they have to let me play. And they always are like, okay, yeah, you can play. But it's a really good way to like engage with the kids. And you know, Uno is a competitive game. Like You get to know them, like who's competitive and who's not. And it's just a fun way to laugh with them. So um, another fun game that they've played is, it's called, What Do You Meme? And so if you haven't seen this game before, um, you get these photo cards and they're pretty big. And it's kind of like um, a version of like apples to apples or cards against humanity, if you've played either of those. Mm -hmm. And so you have the photo card and then each player has, you know, their deck of cards. Um, and they're called captions. And so you have your judge and everyone else puts in their caption. And then whoever gets to collect seven photo cards first, that's who wins the game. So they really like that game. Um, and I've done it with like tweens and I've done it with older teens and they all have fun with it. So um, headbands, that one's pretty popular. Put the card up on your headband and then try to you know give the clues on what's on your head. Um, if you have kids, if you have teens in your area that might be interested in Dungeons and Dragons, there's mm -hmm. a board game that's called Five Minute Dungeons. Yes, and I've yeah. Okay, yeah. So you have to try to like beat the boss in five minutes or less. Um, so it's kind of like a fun, you know, take on like, okay, we're not gonna have time for the whole Dungeons and Dragons campaign, but here's just a fun five minute game. So Anyways, budget, just if you have games, well, then you don't need to buy any, but just allow yourself some money to like replace games or buy new games. So, but yeah, those are always fun. Needle felting. Okay. I should have added a picture to this because I'm sure most of you have seen this somewhere online. I keep getting for it, but it's like this. You buy a kit and it's like this loose wool and um, it just looks like fluffy cotton. And so they give you this, um, this needle and like this little like sponge thing and you just stab the wool until it starts forming a shape. And so um, I would recommend buying the felting kits because everything comes in them and um, it comes with the instructions and actually the instructions were pretty easy to follow, especially for like these kids that have never done this before. But I, I think I bought two kits 
and one of them was for like little cats and the other one was little dogs and each one of the kits made about 12 characters so any they were like 15 dollars so anyways it's kind of fun because they can go home with their, their little item um and I, this one was kind of cool because i had one girl that showed up and um she told her friend and her friend was like i don't know what that is i don't want to come and she's like okay that's fine mm. and she actually she came she made a little dog she ran out of time and so she said hey can i schedule time with you to come back another day and finish this and i said yep this is the day that works for me you feel free to come back well she came back she goes i hope it's okay i brought my friend i showed her a picture of what i was working on she thought it was really cool i said yeah so then i you know improv program of now I'm helping somebody else and so that was kind of good because I got to connect with a new teen that mm -hmm. I hadn't met before and that became somebody that started coming to other programs so really good um chemistry experiments okay so this is something um that the teens told me that they wanted to do and so we did this in October, um, which you'll see that the activities that we did, I was trying to find stuff that they could use as like to prank their friends. <laughs> um, so we made fake blood and, you know, it's pretty simple, corn syrup, cornstarch, food coloring. Um, we made something called gel worms. And like, this is one of those test it before you actually like do it in program, which I'm really bad about. I usually wing things. <laughs> and so. If, anyways, if you do this one, try it, but it, there's instructions, you mix one of the solutions, um, and then you mix the other solution and um, dye it with the food coloring that you want. And I found that if you have plastic syringes, that's better because the instructions say to use like pipettes, which do not work. So mm -hmm. you take your, I'm pretty sure it was the um, calcium chloride solution that's in the syringe and you squirt it into the sodium alginate and it like forms this like gooey worm and it kind of looks like clear spaghetti anyway so they were making them and one girl was making slugs and so she's like i'm gonna make all these slugs and i'm gonna put them all these places and like scare people i said okay whatever you do once you leave this library is i'm not responsible for it you do whatever you want um, we also made fake snot. Um, it's basically, uh, it looks like slime, but it was just, it was interesting. And so they were telling me what they were going to do with that. And I was like, okay, again, whatever you do once you leave here, not my problem. So <laughs> that'd be really fun to do around Halloween or April Fools. I'm sure there's a lot of other fun stuff out there that you could do, but these are just some things that I tried. Is there a lot of issues with this one? Someone wants to know about the, like, um, some of the other craft ones are pretty simple. That seems like it would be a lot of um, cleanup and that kind of issue to deal with, like mess or being, you know, more, I, more prepared for, you know, using chemicals and, and whatnot. Yeah, so um, the chem chemicals are actually, um, they're safe for, like, if they touch your skin. So that was really good. Okay. Um, but I bought all disposable stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to deal with having to wash out sticky things. Um, sure. And then I covered everything in plastic tablecloths. Mm -hmm. So at the end, I just lifted up the tablecloth and crumpled it up and into the garbage. So that made cleanup super easy. Easy, yeah. Um, this was one of those learning moment programs. So we did a beginner's crochet program and um i do not not know how to crochet but i have a really good friend that does and so she was volunteered to lead this crochet program for me and so there's also um someone on staff here that also knows how to crochet so i thought okay i'm gonna have these two people that are master crocheters come in and teach teens how to crochet I had the needle or the crochet hooks and I had a bunch of different yarn. Um, and so what happened is 
I had more teens show up than what I was expecting. And so it became really hard for these two people to teach all of these beginners mm -hmm. and teach their work. So this is just one of those learning moments where if I were to ever do this again, I would have a sign up and limit how many could attend or I would find more people to volunteer to help. So just a learning moment. Um, my friend that's the master crocheter did tell me because we were having trouble with yarn snagging because again, beginners not knowing you know how to collect, correctly loop your yarn. She recommended this brand called Bernat um, and she said that yarn, it's a little more expensive, but it's really good for beginners because it won't snag. So if anybody ever does this, just keep that in mind. Um, this is another program that surprised me that they wanted to do this. Um, but it was around Valentine's Day and they said, we want to make Valentine's cards. And I'm like, you guys are teenagers. You want to make Valentine's cards? Yes. Okay. Well, we are going to make these nice Valentine's cards. So, um, I got cardstock. Um, I got really nice scrapbook paper, adhesive dot rollers. And then something that worked so well is I, um, it says pre-cut images and stickers. I did print and cut on the Cricut. And so I just found a bunch of little cute Valentine's graphics in Canva, printed them, and then had the Cricut cut them out for me. So if you have access to a Cricut machine, I would definitely recommend doing that. If not, then just buy stickers or, you know, they can draw whatever you want them to do. But the cards actually ended up really nice. So I was very impressed with them. Um, and then, yes, we did end up doing Dungeons and Dragons last cool. fall. Um, we had a sign up and what happened was, so my coworker knows how to play the game. I was supposed to be the DM in training. <laughs> and so I sat in during the sessions and, you know, he would go over things with me on like what DM is responsible for all of that. What happened was we had um, a large interest in the group. And so we actually had to find somebody from the community to volunteer. And luckily, you know, we are a um, university town. So we had some, a college student. Um, mm -hmm decide to come volunteer on Saturdays. So we had two separate days and more opportunities for kids to join. Um, I laugh about being the DM in training because we did a Dungeons and Dragons marathon day. And so I was going to help run half of the group. And when it came time for us to like split and for me to DM, um, it did not go well. <laughs> and I had to have one of the kids like help me be the GM. Oh my gosh, it was it was comical. So when we had our regular session, one of the students or one of the teens that hadn't been in my group um, suggested that I sub for our, our group DM that was going to be gone. And the kids that had been in my group on marathon day immediately said no. They're like, we do not want her to DM. I said, oh. it's okay. I don't feel offended. I understand. Not for everyone, definitely. It can be very you know, um, intimidating or a lot of pressure uh, to, to be entertaining and to know what you're, if you don't know what, you know, if you haven't played before, it's hard to keep up with everything. Yeah. Well, and the funny part is like, I'm coming in this from a beginner. So we thought we were going to get all these like big. And I thought, well, I'll learn with them and it'll be easier. No, we got kids that have like played for years. Uh -huh. So they're of course questioning like our DM who has also years of experience and like rules have changed. And so they'd always be pulling out like right. the the player's handbook and like, am I allowed to do this or not? Anyways, it's better to have somebody that knows what they're doing. But um, if you don't have the supplies, these are just the things that we would recommend buying. Player's handbook. Dungeon Master's Guide, and then the Monster Manual. And then we got multiple dice sets to have here. 
Um, most of the kids that would participate had their own dice that they would bring from home, but we had dice sets that they could borrow if they forgot or we didn't have any. So that was really good. Um, okay, we had a library after dark program. And so <clears throat> it was kind of like a mini lock-in. So we did not stay mm -hmm. overnight um, because this is the first time I do something like this. And so making it over like all night made me a little nervous. So we just did this from the time the library closed at seven um, to 11 p.m. And we did it on a day that there was no school um, so that more teens could come. And I let my teen advisory board choose the activities. So they decided that these were the things they wanted. They wanted a movie marathon. So they wanted a room with movies playing all the time. They wanted a room with board games. They wanted um, a room where we could do video games. Um, and then throughout the night, we would bring them all together and we would do group games. So we played hide and go seek in the dark a couple times. Um, mm -hmm. I got finger flashlights so that they could like see as they're running around the library. Um, we played tag a couple times, and then I had some giant um, like inflatable games, like I had bowling um, and some other stuff that they could play. At one point we played bingo as a group, so just to help break up the night. Um, and then we had a snack station open to them all night. Um, and you'll see that the budget says that this was a little more expensive because you don't have to do this, but we decided because it was after seven and we we're going to be here so long, we ordered pizza for everyone that had um, that was attending. And then we had snacks that again were open. They could just come and go as they wanted all night. Um, this is one of the only programs that I made them pre-register for because huh. we needed to get signed permission slips. Mm. So just everything else, they can just show up, drop in. This one, they had to be registered. So uh, it was just also a good way to know like how many, had asked how much people had to buy and yeah. Yeah, someone had asked about, do you have you needed parental consent or a waiver for any of the programs you've done? Yeah, so, this is the only one that we've needed it for. And like for okay. summer reading, we have like teens register, but mm -hmm. if they just want to drop in because they happen to be in the library and heard we're having a program, I let them just show up. But mm -hmm. this was because we needed parental consent and them being here after hours. So yeah, and then we just put um, a note on our permission slip that said they had to be picked up by 11.05. Um, and if not, like we had steps, the internal process that we would do. Um, but luckily, no, all the parents were here. Everyone got picked up on time. Um, we we were um, getting volunteers from the community to help us run this. And we actually had our local mayor show up to volunteer. So that was really cool for him to see like what the library does, but also mm -hmm. for our teens to like get to know their mayor. So it was really nice. Well, that's nice. They have so much, uh, they have the community uh, support for these kind of things you're doing in the library. Or the, the yeah, and it was really good because then we had like a couple weeks later, there was a citywide um, like staff appreciation event and the mayor was there and he was telling people, you know, other city employees about how wonderful the library was and how, you know, he was shocked at this program that we had and like how well the teens were behaved and how well organized things were. I was like, just a great shout out for the library. So nice, nice, yeah. This might be one of my favorite programs. Again, this is one of the more expensive ones. Um, I've never made them register in the past, and it hasn't been an issue. Um, but that's you know up to everyone if they want to sign up or not. Um, but the first time we did this, we did a salsa competition. So I just went and bought all the ingredients that go in salsa and I bought like some fun ingredients as well. Um, I bought different kinds of peppers, different kinds of onions, um, different types of tomatoes. And then I bought some fun stuff. So I bought like peaches and mango and I just laid everything out. 
Oh, and something with this, um, I also borrowed from my coworkers, um, like kitchen utensils. So I borrowed cutting boards, I borrowed knives, um, I borrowed food processors, blenders, um, because that that will save money. So if that's possible, I would recommend doing that. But anyways, we had the teens show up. I had them in groups of two, and we gave them a time limit, um, and we had them draw numbers as to who could go pick their ingredients first, and it was whoever could make the best salsa. And um, at the end, we had our judges panel. So I always say, whoever is working in the library, the evening of our food competitions, that's going to be our judges panel. So I always bring them in when it's time to um, to judge and we taste test and give points and then whoever wins, we have prizes for the winning team. Um, so the first time we did this was salsa and it was kind of funny because one of the groups goes, well, where's the recipe? And I go, what recipe? Well, aren't you going to give us instructions? Oh. And he said, um, no you get to make this up on your own and they they were kind of shocked at that but um it was kind of fun because of course you have like some really good salsas and then some not so good ones we had one that was like super spicy so anyways it was just fun mm -hmm. we did um cupcakes and so we don't have access to an oven here so we couldn't bake the cupcakes so i just got them from a local bakery um unfrosted and then i bought different like pie fillings and then different um extracts for the frosting so they uh we had two categories for judging this time and they um they needed to pick a filling and then flavor their frosting so like flavoring pairing that was one of the uh things we were judging them on and then the second thing was presentation. So like, how well could you decorate it? And um, we were kind of shocked with who won this one because we had one group um, of girls that they decorated their cupcake, super adorable. Like something that you would find in a really nice bakery. Ah. And I was so impressed. But when we went to taste test, it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like apple and like mint it was just not good and we had another kid that like did bananas and coconut and i think he was the one that won so mm. you never know who's who's gonna win it's kind of fun mm. um we're doing a we're doing it again this summer because i do it about every six months so we're going to do gourmet grilled cheese so that'll be kind of fun but yeah this one can get kind of expensive but they love it and then yeah. i just get gift cards to local restaurants as a prize so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so here are some things that I've learned along the way. Um, giving them ownership helps a lot. And so like I always, some of these programs, I have just decided like, hey, we're doing it. But some of them, it's been their input. They've come to me and they've said, we want to do this. Okay tell me what you want to do like the improv night what games do you want to play the library after dark what activities do you want to offer um and then i will go ahead and make the promotional materials for them so i make little postcards and i'll put the information on there and then um next time i meet with them or we have a program i have the cards ready and i leave them in charge of distributing so like I have little postcards here at the library that if somebody were to come in and see and posters, they could pick it up. But if they are going to school um, or right now in summer, if they're hanging out with a friend, like they can take that card and they can say, hey, there's this really cool program at the library that I helped organize. You should come. So just giving them that ownership. Um, and they seem to enjoy that because then they can brag about it. So they can say, yeah, I, I helped with this. I want to show off what I helped you know, promote. So um, I also would recommend setting expectations and boundaries early. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to you. It's going to depend on every person that's running a program. 
Some people are more strict. Some people are more lenient. Um, I don't care if the kids have their cell phones. Like this is a library, it's not school. So, and it's always funny when they like ask permission of the to go to the bathroom and I'm like, yeah, you can just go. You don't need to ask me, it's okay. Um, but also if they're like, some of them, you know, cuss a little bit more than others, like they're teenagers. I personally, I just tell them like, hey, just please don't use that language here. But I've also met people that say like they have a zero cussing policy. And so like they, but if that's your policy, you need to tell them right away, like, hey, we are not doing that here. You know, give them their warning and then say like, these will be the consequences if it continues. Mm -hmm. um, I've also, I have little notes for myself. Um, if you set a boundary, I would be direct, but be careful not to be rude. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tone and delivery is everything. If you have some kids that are horsing around, just go, hey, you know what? I wouldn't do that here. And then, you know, you've told them, okay. But if you start with, hey, you guys better knock that off or I'm going to, you know, you're going to have to leave and you can't act like that here. That's a little different. Mm -hmm. But then there, you know, you're putting them down. So I would just be direct. Be careful not to be rude. Um, make sure it's a safe space for everyone. Something we didn't envision happening is um, this is one of those learning moments when we started our Dungeons and Dragons um, group. You know, we have teens from all over the community coming with different backgrounds, different beliefs. And we had a um, participant that um, is part of the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. And someone else in our group uh, made some comments about their beliefs about it. And so that was our time to like step in quickly and say, okay, you know what? This is a safe space for everyone. And we are going to make sure that everyone feels welcome here. And this is the behavior that we are not going to tolerate. And luckily, we did not have any more issues with it after that. Yep. Um, but this also comes into, like I was saying on improv night, we had some kids show up that were super introverted, quiet, shy. And we had some super extroverted kids. Finding the way to balance that, like mm. whether it's, hey, John, um, what do you think about this? Or, hey, do you have any suggestions? Like reaching out to those kids that are a little quieter and making sure that they know that their opinion or their ideas matter. So um, it's been kind of fun. Inclusive, making them feel included and that it's, it's for you as well, even if you're just not comfortable being as loud and boisterous as some of the other teens. Yeah. Exactly. And like we had this, um, I'll, call, I'll call him John. We had this boy named John that would um, come to programs and he's one of those super quiet, super reserved, um, what is not, you know, originally from Crete, doesn't go to Crete School District. So he's coming to programs and knows nobody. Mm -hmm. And so we started that with him. Hey, John, what, what do you think about this? Or, hey, do you have any ideas of like how I can make this better or anything? So slowly he started getting more comfortable and now he comes and it's like not even the same kid. And I'm like, I'm so glad that he felt comfortable here and that he could open up and get to know everyone. So yeah, it's just uh, making like playing moderator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I would also make sure ask questions, get to know them. Um, I wrote down a little note for myself when I was um, at the after school program, I had a teen, and I'm bringing this up because at the library, I see like the same sort of teens. Um, so, man, this girl, she was so disrespectful and just constant like negative attitude and would always be talking back. And one day I, I happened to know who her mom is. And I said, hey, I said, did you know that your mom and I used to be friends back in high school? And she's like, you know my mom? I said, yeah. I said, I was friends with your mom. Just a coincidence that I knew this person's mom. And she goes, oh. So then she started opening up to me about her family life, you know, and, and all this stuff. So at one point in our conversations, she let me know she had a dog. 
And I go, and so she would talk to me about her dog and what her dog looked like and the dog's name and all these stories. Well, I had a staff member that just, this girl and this staff member, they would just butt heads. And I said, um, have you tried connecting with her? Have you tried talking to her? Yeah, but I can't get through to her. And, and she, you know, she's so rude. She's so disrespectful. And I just, I can't stand her. And I said, well, did you know that she has a dog? She has a dog? Yeah. You know what? Next time you interact with her, ask her about her dog. Mm-hmm. And after that, it just completely changed. And the this, this student was more receptive and because they found something to connect with. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. also know when to back off. And again, this is a learning moment. So going back to our earlier example of John, super shy kid. I am a super sarcastic person. And like, usually with my teens, like I can get away with my sarcasm and like, they know I'm being sarcastic and Mm -hmm. you know, they find it funny. This particular kid did not, did not find my sarcasm funny. He, he would take it as like direct. So that was something for me to be like, oh, know your audience. Like, Mm -hmm. this is not somebody that I can joke around with. So just a reminder to myself, like not everyone (laughs) Yeah. Like sarcasm. So knowing when to back off. Um, and then just like I said, listening, finding ways to connect with them, listening to their ideas, making them feel important. Um, yeah, those are just things that have helped me. And again, it helps the kids become more comfortable as they come to programs. Um, helps me get to know them, helps them feel okay that if they need to come talk to me about something or they need to ask me something that they know I'm open to it. Um, And sometimes like, especially when they come to me with ideas on, hey, we wanna do this. And I'll say, I'm not saying no, let's just just talk about this more. Like, tell me more about this. And letting them know that like, I didn't immediately say, no, we're not doing that. I'm listening to you and we're going to have a discussion and there's a possibility that this could be an option for the future. Or you know what, it might not work out and here are the reasons why. And then usually they're okay. They're like, okay, we get it. And they move on. So at least you're, you like, show that you are listening and respecting them and to listen enough to listen to their idea, even if you're kind of sure, maybe even at the beginning that no, we can never do that. But let's just, you know, hear what you have to say and maybe we can, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. Um, well, there, there's one that did come in, um, actually, while you're talking just at the end bit here, so we'll, we'll grab that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if anybody does have any other questions you want to ask, Mary, um, go ahead and type in the questions section. Um, we did just hit 11 o'clock, but that's okay. We will. Um, we started a little after 10, so it's fine. Um, and we will stick around as long as you all have questions, anything you want to ask, or any ideas, um, things you've done in your library. I'm sure um, Mary and other uh, Attendees would love to hear that too, if you have any tips or tricks for dealing with the teens in your library. Oh, uh, we already answered the question about the parental consent or waiver. That was from that, that one last, that one session, the uh, the lock-in sort of. Um, but this question is, and you kind of uh, uh, discuss the situation with the um, uh, earlier like this, but um, how do you handle bullying within a group? If the teens yeah. are you know, bullying each other or being bearing one of the attendees. I would say be aware. Um, you know, I if usually when I run a, a teen program, I'm by myself. And so that means like I'm running around, getting stuff ready, trying to get around to all the groups, trying to, you know, if we're working on a project, helping everyone. Um, but I always try to have like a listening ear open. And if I might notice that there's a kid that's like, if it's somebody that I know that has regular be, re, regularly been attending and I notice that all of a sudden they're acting weird, like going to check on them, like, hey, is everything okay? Do you want help with something? Um, if you need something, let me know. And, you know, sometimes they will, like, pull me to the side and, like, let me know something's going on. But if I'm actively watching somebody, you know, belittle somebody else, that's just stepping in right away and saying, hey, you know what? we're not going to do that here. Um, You are welcome to stay and and be a positive person in the setting. Um, But if today's not your day, you know what, you are welcome to leave and we'll see you at the next program. So 
Mm -hmm. Like you said, being, you know, I don't know if it's a kill them with kindness, but being respectful, you mentioned earlier, you know, don't just come down on them and be rude about things they're doing that are bad, be as nice as you can to them. Um, and say, you know, next time, I mean, we're not kicking you out yet. <laughs> uh, right. But yeah. All right. And then we did one other question that can to you mentioned that you have a teen advisory board, which is great. I think that's something that um, many libraries are doing now to try and help bring in more teens. Um, how did you recruit the particular mem members for that? Um, I know you said you got the, you asked the teens for their ideas and how to do these, but how did you um, recruit and get that started up in the first place? They're struggling to try and um, their library yeah. with that. So this is something that um, our previous director and I had talked about like she th she thought I needed to start a teen advisory board and I and I had um, something similar when I was at the school it was called youth voice and it was basically a teen advisory board um, so I had a little bit of experience but here at the library I reached out to teens that um, were regular program attenders and I um, said hey you know I want to start this teen advisory board. I said, it's kind of like the student council, but for the library. And, and um, they said, okay, you know, how, what's the commitment? I said, about once a month, um, we'll see what works for everyone's schedule. We'll meet for about an hour. We just want to generate ideas. Um, and so I think I had like three kids to start with, but then what happens is, then like we'd have programs and I'd remind them in front of the group, hey, if you're on the teen advisory board, just a reminder, we're meeting on this day. And so I would have other kids ask, well, what's that? And I'd say, well, you know, like they just help like come up with program ideas and help promote things and then like help set up and clean up afterwards. Well, that sounds kind of fun. Can I join? Yeah, this is when we're meeting. You are welcome to come. And actually something that I've read, um, and I just think this is like the best idea ever, is keep it open so if, you know throughout the school year or if you're doing this all year long in the summer um if some kids you know they might get busier and they might not be able to come anymore but if you have a kid that stops in once and says hey i want to join and they come one time and contribute ideas that's perfectly okay too um you know i always just try that if i if we're focusing a lot on like activities or programs that are more girl oriented I always remind them I go okay well, we need to find a balance we need to find stuff that everyone would like to come to um, and then usually they go well we think the boys would like to come to this or like let's make it a little more general okay so yeah it's kind of nice and they definitely like having their input especially mm -hmm. when one of their programs like we're able to do it um, it makes them so excited because they, they get to brag about it. Yeah, this is my but idea. One of the favorites. Yeah. You know, but you know, sky's the limit with their ideas, but it's funny because at this point, they know me well enough where some of the ideas they come up with are just out of this world. Like, <laughs> how creative, right? <laughs> and I just go, um, you know what I'm going to say? And, and then they know, they go, that we don't have a, that kind of a budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe someday, but not now. I'm yeah. like, okay. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. I didn't see anything else come in as questions. Do you have anything on um, last uh, slides or anything else to wrap up with, Mary? Or is this? I I think this is it. Okay. All right. Yeah, just waiting to see if anybody has any. Anybody have any last minute desperate things you want to ask of Mary or anything you want to share um, that you've done at your library? Um, I'm always looking to like borrow ideas from other people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm completely open to program or idea sharing. I think that's why we have a lot of these um, presentations like this for teens and youth and and um, you know, adult, you know, idea, just I, programming ideas because everyone's looking for something new and different to do. Um, mm -hmm. in their libraries definitely. All right, so I think we'll wrap it up for today then. Um, uh, thank you so much, Mary. This was great. So many great ideas. I hope a lot of people follow through um, with doing some of these if they haven't done them at their own libraries um, as well. 
so I am going to do my little wrap up. We're going to pull back to my screen here quickly. Uh, so, um, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mary. Um, we are the show is being recorded right now and will be available for you all to watch later. And Mary, you can send me your slides or a link to them whenever you get a chance. So that'll be added to the show archive. Um, as I said, so this is great. I've um, got some thank yous coming in too um, from the attendees as well. Great, some uh, great ideas that they're going to bring back to uh, their libraries. Awesome. All right, so I'm um, going to pop over to our main Encompass Live page and show you. These are upcoming shows, um, but for the archive, here's a link. Link right here, archived Encompass Live shows at the bottom. Uh, the most recent show goes at the uh, top of the page here. So today's will be there, should be by the end of the day tomorrow, um, get everything processed through, go to webinar and uh, YouTube. There'll be a link to the, to the YouTube recording and a link to uh, Mary's slides here. Uh, while I'm here, I'll show you, you can also search our show archives to see if we've done anything, uh, a show on a topic that you might be interested in. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want to. Um, that is, uh, if you want something very current, um, that's because this is our full show archives. I'm not going to scroll all the way down because it's a very, very long page, as you can see. But we have all of our show recordings going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we are on our 16th year of the show, at least what it's up to. Uh, and um, so just pay attention when you're looking at the archives and watching a past show for the original broadcast date. They all have a date there so you know when it was originally done. Um, many of the shows will be fine to watch, stand the test of time, have good, useful information, but some things will become old and outdated. Uh, programs or services may have changed drastically, serve, um, resources, um, things might not exist anymore, links may be broken. Um, People might work at a different library than when they or a different organization entirely than when they uh, presented for us. So just pay attention when you are watching any of our old shows. Uh, but uh, this is something libraries do keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a place to host them, which right now is the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, we will always have um, all of our show archives available to you. Um, all right. So that will wrap up for today's show. We do also have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. I've got a link to it on our, our page. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. You'll get reminders about when um, shows that are coming up. Um, here's one for today's show and uh, announcing it from last week. Um, and then when the recording is available, I post on here as well. We use the hashtag Encomp Live also on our Twitter and Instagram. So if you look for that hashtag, you'll also find um, where we're posting about um, the show. So that is it for today. I hope you'll join us uh, next week when uh, we'll be hearing from a library strategist. Um, we're still waiting for her to send me um, her full description of what she's gonna speak about. Um, but um, Elaine Lazda is from the University at Albany, um, in um, Albany, New York, their university library. And she is their new-ish uh, library strategist there. So talking about um, planning and um, for um, things at your library. Uh, this is a session, uh, I reached out to her, she did a session at our computers and the Computers and Libraries Conference about being a library strategist, um, and she's kind of going to tweak her description here. So um, if you're interested in that thing and library strategy um, that you can use in your library, do sign up for next week's show and any of our other upcoming ones. You'll notice that the week after that, we are off. Uh, just let everyone know, uh, June 19th is Juneteenth, um, and it is a federal and state holiday. And since we are the state um, a state agency, we are closed that day. So no show um, on June 19th. We'll be back on June 26th. But we will be here next week, then a week off, and then we're back. All right. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Mary. This is an awesome presentation. Um, as you're doing, you're doing lots of fun, great things out there, over there in Crete. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. And I hope we will see some of you on a, at a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>